Hey guys and welcome back to our Wally modeling series and in this part we're going to go ahead and model this piece in. Um, we're also going to go ahead and make this um, indentation in here and then later on we're going to go ahead and split this part into um, two pieces because as you can tell right there it's made out of two pieces so we're going to go ahead and split it here make it into two pieces and then his eyebrow should be done so let's go ahead and open up the file where we left off and it was right here so we made these eyes and we got the block of the body still so I'm just gonna turn that off and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and group these pieces together so shift click all of them hit ctrl G and just name this eye. Now we're also going to go ahead and go to modify and center pivot and now for that group we got the pivot in the center and we're going to go ahead and duplicate this so control D and then use my scale tool and type in minus one in the X direction and that will flip it over and then we're going to go ahead and delete that one just so we can work on the right side so that will be sitting in there. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is make the indentation. Um, so let's go into our side view and unsmooth it. And then we're going to go ahead and select the faces that we need. But before that, we're going to have to make some adjustments for these edges. So if I just go into my X-ray mode and select this edge, and I'm just going to move it around here and go to edit mesh insert edge loop tool and we're gonna add an edge in here as well like so now we can go ahead and start selecting the edges that we need so I'm gonna pick these ones and probably that one as well and that one like so and now we can start extruding and so on to make our indentation. So if you come into Edit Mesh and we're going to use the Extrude tool and at the same time as we're doing it, we're going to, um, with the Extrude tool, add in the supporting edges so we don't have to do that later. Uh, this way it's a lot easier. So I'm just going to hit Extrude first and then go into Offset and just give it a tiny little bit of an offset. So this will hold that edge then we're going to hit extrude again and in thickness we're going to pull it down a tiny bit so that will give us that edge loop okay and then I'm going to hit extrude again go down in thickness roughly the size that I need like so then we're going to hit extrude again and go down in the thickness just a tiny bit so that will give us that edge loop okay then we're going to hit extrude again and set the offset down a tiny bit so that will give us that edge loop okay so we created all the supporting edges that we need at the same time as we extruded it so now that we've got our indentation and hit smooth as you can tell it smooths it really nicely now we might make this corner um, so it's not rounded but flat and I think that's what we're going to do so if you basically what we need for that to do is we're going to need an edge loop in here and here so that corner will hold its shape and we're going to need an edge going down here and here so that will hold its shape as well so we're going to do that with the interactive split tool and I'm just going to click around here and drag all the way down here and then right click and do the same thing here and again if you're interactive split tool seem to be too sticky then come into the interactive split tool icon and just turn it down the magnet tolerance to one and same for when we were extruding um, make sure that this slider is if you click on this twice and then click this all the way around so it's on tiny that means that um, 
you'll have more control over so you can extrude it just a tiny bit and not a lot so it ain't gonna jump as much okay um, in case you've forgotten how to do that and then we're gonna go into our insert uh, interactive split tool again and I'm just gonna click from here all the way down here and same here like so and now if we smooth that they should hold that corner as you can tell okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, extract this face so we can create our actual eyebrow so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and select actually we might have to split this face here because now this is if you come into if you select this object and then go to mesh clean up and select matching polygons faces with more than four sides and hit apply as you can tell it's selected those faces now because these have more than uh, four faces because of these edges that we added in there so now we're going to go ahead and fix those quickly okay so we're going to go ahead and turn these um, five-sided faces to well we're going to turn a couple of them to triangles and a couple of them to quads um, having a couple of triangles don't really make too much difference um, but try to avoid them as much as I uh, as much as we can but a uh, triangle is better than a quad I um, mean a five-sided face so we're going to cut some of them into five-sided I mean uh, triangles so right here I'm just going to slice in here with the interactive slip tool and we're also going to make a cut from here to here and we're also going to make a cut from here to here and as you can tell we've got a triangle there and the triangle there but um, this bit is a quad now so it's okay um, we're gonna go ahead and just make a cut from here to here and that will anchor that point off and we're also going to make a cut from here to here and now for this bit we're going to do the same with this anchor it off there at the end like so and we're also going to do the same thing with this one and anchor it off all the way down on that where and now if we go to object mode, go to mesh um, clean up and select that and hit apply um, we got a face in here and a face there and that's because this slice that we've done was at the wrong place so I'm just going to go ahead and select this edge and that edge and hit delete edge and now I'm just going to go back to the interactive split tool and just make sure that it's on the right place where we're cutting it like so and now hit that again and as we can tell it didn't select anything so everything is either quads or triangles so that's pretty good and now I'm just going to hit free to smooth it make sure there is no pinching where the triangles are and so on and everything is looking pretty good so now that we have that just gonna go ahead and select the faces that I need for the eyebrow so we're gonna go ahead and select these faces in on smooth mode and then we're just gonna go ahead and go to edit mesh duplicate face and hit that button and as you can tell and hit in the outliner down here we got a poly surface 2 and if I just go to modify center pivot and move it up as you can tell we got a plane right there so the next thing we're gonna do is obviously you're gonna have to go ahead and um, extrude this um, exactly the same way how we extruded this so you're gonna keep its shape and don't have to go ahead and add the edge loops later on so I'm gonna go ahead and hit extrude and then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a tiny bit of an offset 
like so. So I'll give it a 0 0.2 offset minus 0 0.2. Just so I know. Minus 0 0.2 offset. Ooh, that might be too much. Minus 0 0.1. That's still too much, so we'll go minus not point not five. That's still a bit. So we'll go with three, two. Yeah, we'll go with two. So minus not point not two. And then I'm just gonna hit extrude again. Don't mesh extrude. And we're gonna go ahead and scale this. I mean Go with the thickness and with a tiny bit, so probably minus or not point not. What did we do? Not point not two. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit extrude again. And now we're gonna pull out the actual thickness of it. Which will probably be something like this. We can always change it a bit later. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and hit extrude again and go down to thickness and give it a tiny bit of a thickness so it will keep its shape. And then we're going to hit extrude one more time and give it an, a tiny bit of an offset minus not point not two. And let me just have a look how that's looking. There we go, 0.01, this should do it, and then now uh, if I come out and smooth it, it should look quite nice, and obviously you're going to have to add the edge loops into here as well, so it will keep this corner, so I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit Mesh, Interactive Split Tool, like so, you're going to go ahead and this looks a bit off to me and I wonder why I think we might have scaled this in a little bit let me just have a look now side view side view looks good front view that looks good too I don't know it might just be my eye oh well it should be okay so we're just going to go ahead and make a cut from there to here. And it won't let me. Let me just move this again. Okay. We might use the um, uh, insert edge loop tool might as well so I'm gonna add one in here this edge doesn't seem to be where it's supposed to be so you might have to have a look at that in a minute so let me just move that and that's looking a little bit better now we still got add an edge loop going um, in this direction so I might just make a cut here Go edit mesh interactive split and cut from here to all the way down to the bottom. If it will let me interactive split tool and I'm just gonna turn the magnet down. So I should have more control over what it's doing, hopefully. There we go. And we're going to also make a cut right here. Do it. Yeah, you sometimes do get some funny things with the interactive split tool, but oh well. At the end, it will do the job, hopefully. I'm just going to cut it there for now. And then I'll make another cut because it didn't like. And then I'm just going to go ahead and move this where to see. 
Okay. Let's select that and just move it like so. And now if you smooth it, it should keep its shape beautifully. And now we can go ahead and try to squeeze this in where it's supposed to sit and it should fit roughly okay. We might have to scale this as you can tell. So we're just going to go ahead, scale it a tad and then we're going to go ahead and move the words so it sits in there how it should be okay. So we're going to go into our front view, turn x-ray on and then we're going to go ahead and right click vertex only on this so if I just deselect select my shape and hit vertex mode and then go into our front view now we can go ahead and select some points and just make sure that it sits in there and it's roughly the right shape okay so that's what I'm doing I'm just going around move it in move it back out where I can see the edge of the indentation that we made which is right there and now I'm just gonna go around and do the same for all of these just make sure it sits at the right place like so like so and then I can move it down a bit more later on down the line and also here so making sure it's sitting in there like so and then I'm gonna come out have a look what it's looking like I turn it tray off yep and that looks like it's sitting in there fairly well apart from this edge here so I'm just going to do that in my perspective mode select these bottom ones and we're just going to go ahead and move it down like so so it sits in there perfectly and we're also going to do that up here if I don't well, no, we're going to leave that as it is, so it looks a bit better. And then we're going to just move it down a tad, and we'll probably even move it that way a tad. So it just depends on your preference, how deep you want this cut in, and so on. And we have Wally's eyebrows created, and you can even mess around with this if I just press insert on my keyboard and move this point in here just roughly in there press insert again and then if I rotate now we got Wally's eyebrows working <laughs> we got our indentation looking all nice and clean and Wally's eyebrows are completed so I'll see you guys in the next part